Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. This is my show manager, Ella, and today we're here to talk to you about whether or not you should fertilize your seedlings. As always, we are going to take the science and what the literature says and put it to the test. There's no hacks or this is what I do on this channel. It's completely based on facts. So if you like the sounds of that, be sure to hit that like button possibly that subscribe button and join our fabulous crew of people who make this channel truly possible. Over on my website, yes, website, it is official. There is a website called gardeningincanada.net and over there you will find a huge number of resources that I will be posting, including free downloadable material. This one is going to include more of a tips and tricks guide, but I also have just a general blog post that's going to have a printable sheet that's going to help you guys because a lot of you have commented saying that you write notes, you DM'd me showing me your notepads, and I want to give you a sheet of paper or a downloadable PDF where you can actually fill it in and catch up on the highlights and the main focuses for each one of the videos. So be sure to check out that blog post as well. I will leave the link down below. I'm super excited for this. I honestly, this never would have happened without you guys because you all push me to do better and to post my thoughts and on everything that I do. And initially, I always write out scripts. I write out all my research. I actually keep the research papers that I read in order to formulate the videos. So it only makes sense that since I'm writing this stuff out anyways, that I put it in a place where you guys can access it as well. So super excited. I designed it all by myself. So if it's glitchy, I apologize but I tried really, really hard and I've been trying to keep it a secret for the longest time, but I'm done. The secret's out. Website, gardeningincanada.net. Okay, enough of that. Let's jump into whether or not you should fertilize your seedlings. So this is a serious debate. People think that if we fertilize our seedlings, we will get stronger plants or stronger seedlings that then ultimately will transplant better into the outdoors. And the literature actually supports this. However, there are very specific things to consider when fertilizing your seedlings. Typically, abnormal growth, especially in the shoots of the plant, is indicative of some sort of nutrient deficiency, more so than a pest or an issue with the seed itself. So if those initial leaves are looking a little crimpled or funny or different colors, this could be a sign that your potting soil mixture or your pH of your potting soil mixture, which we'll get into a bit later, is less than ideal for supporting your plant growth. I commonly see this in brassica species, so things like Brussels sprouts, cabbage, things of that nature. I actually, I'll insert some footage of some Brussels sprouts that I have growing in the Jiffy Premium uh, seed starter mix and they have deformed leaves and those deformed leaves I'm very confident is due to possibly a calcium or a sulfur deficiency in the soil so there's no coming back from it after you hit the state where you have deformed leaves it is what it is your only motivation or the only thing you should be concerned with is actually making the next set of leaves better and not have that nutrient deficiency through fertilizing. So for seedlings, the main thing we're focused on is N, P, and K. While there are a whole host of other macronutrients and micronutrients that plants need to survive, N, P, K is our main focus. I will just list here exactly what each one of those do if you aren't familiar. I'm gonna start this whole thing off by do not fertilize your seeds if the leaves are touching the soil or if it is droopy or underwatered. This is incredibly important. If your seedling is getting close to permanent wilting point, then you're going to want to water first, saturate that soil, let it have about a few hours to absorb that water that's in the soil, and then you're going to want to apply that fertilizer. 
If you fail to do this, you actually may end up burning your seedling by accident because the salt imbalance between the root and the soil isn't what it needs to be. And for more on that, check out my Calathea video where I actually talk about salty soil and exactly, or my bottom, it's my bottom watering video. Check out my bottom watering video for more on why salts affects plants because it will give you a better idea of what I'm talking about. So moist soil, make sure the plant leaves are up off of the soil base. This can happen either if they're droopy or leggy, they may be resting on the soil, but even if they're under a high intensity light, such as the one, the tent that I have behind me, my flowers, my petunia flowers are actually touching the soil. I would not fertilize them because I don't want osmosis to draw water from the leaves into the fertilizer or into the soil. So I want to avoid leaf burn because I don't have a lot of leaves yet. However, once I get a few more on the plant and they start kind of getting up off that soil base, then I will apply fertilizer. But for example, I have these coleus right here in front of me. These guys are up off the ground. They are healthy. They don't look funny. The soil is moist. This I could fertilize and I do fertilize. So one of my favorite studies talking about seedling, um, seedlings and fertilizing is actually done by UMass Amherst. They are a agricultural, they have an agricultural based college that mainly focuses on egg and production. So greenhouses on a large scale and trying to get the best bang for your buck. So this isn't, um, this isn't for gardeners or bloggers. This study was done for greenhouses to help them achieve the highest rates of germination, the highest rates of transplant survival, that sort of thing. The way UMass Amherst set this up is they actually divided everything into stages and then they applied fertilizer on some, they had controls that they didn't apply fertilizer, and then they actually looked at how those plants responded to fertilizer at different rates. My favorite was stage two and three. So stage two and three, as you can see on this chart here, they actually ended up seeing benefits to applying fertilizer. The reason for this is because in stage two and three, this is when most disorders end up happening, nutrient deficiency disorders. And these can range from root and shoot tip issues, deformed leaves and discoloration. This discoloration typically is seed chlorosis, which can be caused by an iron deficiency. Now, it's important to note that chlorosis can also be caused by waterlogged soil. So while this can show up in stage two or three, it may not necessarily be a nutrient deficiency in all cases, it actually could be an overwatering issue. In stages three and four, they actually started to notice huge differences in that upper biomass. So for example, they saw taller plants and they saw bushier plants. So they saw more plant on the surface of the soil when they added fertilizer in. Interestingly enough, they actually use different sources of fertilizer. So one source they used was NH4 and the other one was NO3 fertilizer. So they do come um, in different forms of nitrogen. However, this is more so to do with the processing and the source of that nitrogen. So because of that, they did notice changes depending on which one you added. We're gonna get into the why of that just a little bit later because it doesn't actually pertain to the nitrogen quality itself. It actually pertains to something completely different. Overall though, NH4 actually yielded better, bushier bedding plants. NH4 stands for ammonium. So you can get ammonium nitrate, for example, all these products with ammonium in it, it's very, very common, especially in the fertilizers that have really, really high rates of nitrogen. So if you're seeing things like 24 or 24-10, things of that nature, that probably has an ammonium base to it. You will not find these rates in organic fertilizer. It, you just, you won't. 
it is too concentrated, it is manufactured, it will not happen. Nitrate is another form of bioavailable nitrogen for plants. However, typically is not coupled with phosphorus. So that is that middle number. That middle number in a nitrate based fertilizer is completely empty. It will have a big old zero in its place. This is the reason why ammonium does better for seedling growth than nitrate does. Plants in their infancy need phosphorus. Now, not much, generally 2% or less is adequate, but they do need some because phosphorus is incredibly integral to root development. So if you're using nitrate only, you don't end up with much root development, you end up with mostly biomass development above the surface. And while that seems like a good idea, you need the root mass to be there in order to give it that extra bump, which is what ammonium fertilizer is doing. Probably the single most interesting part about this entire study is that when low fertilizer or no fertilizer was added, we end up with short shoots with very few leaves or a regular amount of leaves, but we actually ended up with an enormous amount of root growth. The opposite to that is that if we saw moderate to heavy fertilization of our seedlings, we ended up with really tall plants with a lot of bushy bushy and not a lot of root mass. So you kind of have to pick your poison here. While plants that are fertilized do tend to transplant better, is that maybe because the foliage that we have, because there's so much of it, is less noticeable when it goes down? It all depends as well. If you have more foliage to do the photosynthesis, you typically will be better off. However, if you are a notorious overwaterer or you are really bad at ending up with root rot, you may want to abstain from using fertilizers in the seedling stage because you want to build up that root mass so you have an absolute powerhouse below the surface in order to power everything. So this is when stuff starts getting really nerdy. I always push for po soil pH. You guys hear me say it all the time in the garden. If you're showing a deficiency, you need to check your pH because pH actually will affect how nutrients is delivered to the plant. Typically, soils are very nutrient rich and the pH is the issue. And this is the same rule that applies with seedlings. Seedlings love a pH of about 5.4 to 6.8. And if you watch my coconut choir video or my peat moss video, you know that peat moss, coconut choir, and any kind of seed starting mix is drastically lower than the pH that's needed. That's why, especially in the case of specialty seeds, neutralizing that pH with a lime product may be in your best interest to ensure the best germination and the best seed survival. This study took everything one step further. They used the ammonium, the NH4, combined with the nitrate, the NO3, and they actually switched on and off as to which one they were using at that time. What ended up happening, because ammonium is incredibly acidic, and nitrate is on the opposite side of the pH scale, what ended up happening when they were used in conjunction with each other is they self-regulated one another and they actually brought that pH to an ideal zone of around the 5.4 to 6.8. This means when they were used in conjunction with each other, the seedlings ended up having the best results. So what does this all mean? Well, what this means is that you can apply fertilizer and you want to make sure you have some phosphate in the product. I will leave an Amazon link down below for some products that will work best for you guys, but ultimately that's what it comes down to. Now, you're not gonna wanna do a full strength because we have root hairs and we have to make sure that our soil um, salt concentration is in balance. So I would actually re recommend quarter strength, especially if you're using an in 
organic form. Now, if you're using an organic form of fertilizer, there's nothing wrong with this, but you're not going to see the same results. The reason being is because it isn't fully bioavailable yet, and in many cases, a huge majority of that nutrients is actually locked up in the system still, and microbes need to pitch in to break it down. So organic, unfortunately, isn't going to cut it here. However, if you want to fertilize and you want to stay organic, then there's no reason why you can't add it. Just don't expect miracles. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below if you fertilize your seedlings or not. And make sure to let people know exactly how you fertilize and why, because it actually really helps a lot of the other subscribers on the channel. I want to build more of a community around gardening in Canada, a science-based nerdy garden community. So the more we can help each other out with our knowledge, the better. I appreciate it greatly. Ella says adios for right now. And we'll talk to you guys next time. Oh, and go visit the website. I think you guys are going to love it. Talk to you later.